Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, and I will, I will, I will I can't be silent. In my home, I can't be silent. In my community, I cannot be silent. His love is from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting to everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. Glory be to God. To everlasting. Oh, God, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. I said the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You may have your seat in his presence. Hallelujah. In his presence. In his presence. In his presence. Thank the Lord today. Can we give the Lord another round, round of applause? Thank the Lord. Well, happy Sabbath to you, Shiloh. Happy Sabbath. I'm Pastor BJ. So glad to meet you. And to those of you who are joining us online, we're so glad that you are joining us today. We want you to talk back in the comments, put it all in the chat. Let's have a great continued time in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Greetings to each and every one of you. We thank the Lord because it is Black History Month. Thank you for the invitation to come to be a part of what you all are doing as you're lifting up the name of the Lord, as you're spreading the gospel to the community, as you're changing hearts. I want to say and commend Shiloh Seventh Day Adventist Church. Give yourselves a round of applause for the work that you're doing. Not just coming into the house of God, but into the community, going out, helping people, loving people just because they exist with no strings attached. You are to be commended for that because that is what we have been called to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord today. Can you help me thank the Lord for Crawford Adventist Academy? The wonderful singing and ministry this morning. Come on, let's, 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 let's thank our young people. They could be so many places, but they're here lifting up the name of the Lord today. So many places. 
My heart was touched to see them singing and worshiping. And they weren't just up here singing because they were told to be. They closed their eyes and they sung unto a holy God, a holy heart unto a holy God. Even some of the young men who weren't even up here singing had their eyes closed, worshiping. They chose worship over chaos. They choose worship over violence. Thank God for you. Keep pushing. The best is yet to come. I said, just keep pushing. The best is yet to come. If you trust in the Lord, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You all look like you came to have some church today. Well, we're here. We might as well, right? All right, all right, all right. Again, God bless you, Crawford Academy. I want to thank the Lord for um, a few that have joined us. I see Elder Karen is with us. She's one of the elders at our church. Thank you so much for joining us. I see Pastor Judith James is there. Good to see you and anyone else that I may have missed and I know you. But I want to thank the Lord for each of you, God's people. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for my wife, Pastor Aisha. She's with you. Will you give my wife a round of applause? She has served you a few times here, and now it's my turn. I'm just glad that she's able to be here with me. And if you will, will you just join me and rest on your feet? Can we thank the Lord for Pastor Andre Anderson? Will you just do me the honor? Can we thank the Lord for Pastor Andre Anderson? Amen. We need to get him a t-shirt that says, I am a miracle. Uh-huh. I am a miracle. I'm a living walking, breathing miracle. To God be the glory for the things he's done. I said to God be the glory for the thing. We thank God for the doctors. We thank God for medication, but to God be the glory. To God be all the glory for the things he has done. Amen, amen, amen. Some of you didn't stand, but that's okay. I know you love him. I know you love him. I got to get into my sermons. You haven't started my clock yet, have you? You haven't? Okay, 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 good, good, good. Listen, before we get into the Word of God today, there are a few things that you have to do. There are four things. Somebody say four things. Four things that you have to do for your pastor. Like I said, God spared his life. He's a walking, living, breathing miracle. There are four things that you must do for your pastor. Are you willing? Are you willing? Okay, well, since you've agreed, we just signed a verbal contract, all right? The first thing you must do is you must pray for your pastor daily pray for your pastor this is the shepherd that is managing this ministry watching over your soul laying before the lord for on your behalf pray for your pastor every day lord please bless my pastor lord cause his face to shine cause your face to shine upon him lord let everything that he is doing let it manifest lord lord bring it to light bless him protect him and his family you have to pray for your pastor somebody say pray for your pastor the second thing you have to do is you have to praise God for your pastor. God, I thank you for my pastor. You gave me a pastor after your heart. You gave me a pastor who leads with integrity. You gave me a pastor. Come on, somebody. Where? Come on. Come on, Shiloh. You gave me a pastor who leads with integrity. Hallelujah. And I thank you for that. The third thing you must do is you must provide. Somebody say provide for your pastor. Provide for your pastor. That means whatever the pastor needs in the ministry, even during his time away, one of the greatest things that he shared with us is that everything maintained as it should have. That means you help provide for him because when he's up here preaching, he can't be on the video ministry. He can't usher. He can't be on the organ. So everything that you do here in this ministry that helps lift his arms, you provide for your pastor. Pray. Praise God. Provide. And the fourth thing you should do is protect your pastor. Somebody say, protect your pastor. That means that he is not the topic of negative discussion in the beauty shop or the barber shop. Oh, I said something right there. What are you talking about, pastor? Pastor Andre, oh no, not my pastor. You're not talking about my pastor. My pastor is a man of God. He's not a perfect man, but he is a man of God. You protect your pastor. So now that you've signed that contract verbally, I know you're going to do that. Bless the Lord again. I'm so grateful to be here. My heart is full. My heart is, is so full. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You're my strength. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Is it customary to stand for the red word in the sanctuary? If you will, rest on your feet again, if you will. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Let's work it out today, all right? 
coming from Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 through 15. I'm reading the English Standard Version. Exodus 14, 13 through 15. I love the Children's Church cartoon video that they put up. I told Pastor Aisha, I said, Lord, I said, all I have to do is give the subject and then sit back down. I mean, they, they just preached my sermon there, you know, right there. I love it. I love it. I love it. The word of the Lord, beginning with verse 13. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Somebody say today. today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see, you shall never see again. Somebody say again. again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry for me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Somebody say, go forward. As you take your seat, look at someone on the left or the right. Just look at them and say, go forward. Go forward. You may have your seats in Jesus' name. Amen. My subject today, how to move forward. How to move forward. Not just go forward, but how to move forward. For the month of February this year, 2023, you have selected the word, the concept. You have selected the idea of forward as your theme. If there's ever been a time in our lives, now is the time to move forward. Someone say forward. forward. Not to move forward in just anything, because there are a lot of things that we can move forward in. So not just anything, but to be reasonably clear, I'm talking about moving forward in the Lord. Forward in the things of God. Forward in the ways of God. In the word of God. So he or she who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Amen? In today's passage of scripture, we see that God's people are facing a dangerous situation. They're in the middle of it. They're in the thick of it. They are at the time in their journey when after the 12 plagues came to Egypt, Pharaoh decided to allow the Israelites to leave. And even with all that they experienced and what they were about to experience, you have to know as we look at this word, as we look at this text, that God has a plan. Someone say, God has a plan. Amen. Hear me, young people, today. God has a plan. You have been marked for greatness, and God has a plan for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. God had a plan, and he had everything in and under control. So with all of the uncertainty, with all of the unsurety, literally they were walking in the wilderness, you've got to know that whatever you are dealing with, whatever you are processing in your life, you've got to know that God's got this. Amen, amen. We must realize that even when situations don't look good and they don't always feel right, know that God is in control of every situation. Sometimes we feel that our hearts will literally burst from our chest because we're going through so much, but you've got to know that God knows what is happening to you and he knows the design. God knows the very infrastructure of the situation. He knows the very outcome of everything that you're going through. He's designed every place, everything, everything to bring you to a place of glory in him, to make you better, to show you that he is in control and he will get some glory out of the situation. Can I qualify it? Jeremiah 29, 11, what does it say? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Someone say, forward. As they were leaving and journeying into the wilderness and someone here today, you may feel like you've been led right into the thick of the wilderness. God told them specifically where to go and where to encamp. In verse two, the Bible tells us, he said, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pihahatharoth between Migdal and the sea over against Belazon before it shall ye, you shall encamp by the sea. So he told them specifically where to go and what to do because God knew what he was doing. What you have to realize today, my friends, is that God is always setting you up for the next. Someone say setting me up. Uh-huh. There have been people who've been set up and they ended up in jail. There have been people who have been set up and they have ended up and they have died and lost things and lost assets and lost family members and lost relationships. But anytime God is setting you up, you will lose, lose nothing, but you have everything to gain. Who doesn't mind being set up by God today? 
Everything he is doing is setting you up. So no matter what you have to do, no matter where you have to go, no matter how you have to do it, no matter how hard it may seem, it will always be set up for the next victory. It will always, always be set up for the next move of God in your life. And I want to be used by God. Do I have a witness today? I want to be used by God. God set them up. He set them up so that he even told Moses, and we saw it in the cartoon in verse 4. He said, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. So God told Moses, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to harden Pharaoh's heart so that he can come after you, so I can get the glory. So you've got to understand, my friends, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Oh, we don't. We fight against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So everything that has come your way that is contrary to the will of God in your life, you've got to understand that it is the will of God in your life because God is just setting you up. Sometimes God will harden hearts so that he can get the glory out of your life. And it doesn't always feel good. Do I have a witness today? It doesn't always feel good, but it always ends good. The current challenge, this current challenge rather, this current, current pain, this current hardship that anyone is going through today. I don't want to survey the room. I could ask you to raise your hands, but I know, as I know that there's someone in the room who is experiencing a great amount of pain today, even a current hardship. Whatever it is, you've got to know it is not going to take you out. You have to understand that God has a specific plan and that God, watch this, he trusts you with chaos. Let that sit for a moment. I said, God trusts you with chaos. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying that because he knows. God has the confidence in what he has put in you. The spirit of the Lord, the gift, the trust. He has the trust in you. And he knows that you're going to choose him when you're faced with every dark situation. So he takes pleasure. He takes pleasure in allowing you to go through things because he knows that when you choose him, he's going, you're going to come out of it better than you were before and that God is going to get the glory. Just look at someone and say, he trusts you, he trusts you. He trusts you. He trusts you. The Bible tells us that as Pharaoh and his army got closer to them, the Israelites saw them from afar. They became afraid. They were scared. They were frightened. Out of their fear and their frustration, they began to look at Moses and they began to ridicule him. They began to say, why did you even bring us out here? At least in Egypt, we had our homes. At least in Egypt, we had food some of the time. It was hard, but at least we were alive. At, you only brought us out here to die. They said it would be better if we had have just stayed in Egypt. Now, I don't know who has been complaining about where the Lord has you. I don't know who has been complaining about the situation that you are in. I don't know who has been experiencing some resentment toward God, anger toward yourself, or some type of disconnect with someone else because you have found yourself in a situation. But someone, you have been blaming God. You've been blaming someone else. But it's time out for complaining about where you are. Because where you are is only an opportunity but to go up or to go forward. Someone say forward. And when you complain, you cannot see clearly. I said, when you complain, you cannot see clearly. You can't see the potential of the victory that lies in the push of a struggle. Because you're too busy complaining. You're looking at what you see, not what you should be seeing. All you see is what you don't have. All you see is your pain. But today, God is telling us to move forward. Move forward from your stinking thinking and think like him. Don't resent, but repent and move forward in him. Complaining doesn't change a thing, but what it does is it puts up a screen. It hinders us from getting all of what God has for, for us. It hinders us from implementing the strategies that are found in the word of God because we are complaining. Someone just say forward. 
So Moses replies, and this is our focal text that we read. Moses says to the people, he says, fear not. He says, stand firm. He says, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see never again. He says, the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. I don't know who I've come for today, but you don't have to fear, for God is with you. I said, you don't have to fear because God is with you. You don't have to worry because he is with you. He trusts you with this. And he said in his word, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So you don't have to worry about a thing. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Everything's going to be all right. I said, every little thing is going to be all right. So don't worry, man. Don't worry about a thing. I'm trying, y'all. I'm American. I keep trying every now and then. I'm going to get it after a while. I'm practicing. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. She said you did all right. She said you did all right. Did I get a passing grade? All right. To God be the glory. It's going to be all right. See, now I want to try it again, but I feel like I might mess. So let me move on. When you see your giants, when you see the pharaohs of your life, the way God sees them, you will realize that they are only a tool. Someone say a tool. They are only a motivator. They are only a catalyst to push you right into the next miracle that God has waiting for you. So the truth of the matter is, Pastor Anderson, trouble really ain't trouble. (laughs) I said trouble really ain't trouble. And it certainly doesn't last always. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Can you imagine for a moment, if we can get into the mind of the Israelites and go back into the Bible story, can you imagine in your mind how chaotic it was? They were encamped in a trench. God led them to a specific place. The Red Sea was on one side and they saw from afar that Pharaoh and his army were coming from the other side and they looked around. They didn't know what they were going to do. They were in a chaotic situation. Is there anybody who's ever been in a chaotic situation? As we say in North Carolina, where I'm from, between a rock and a hard place oh you know what I'm talking about you you say it too all right all right all right it was very chaotic they didn't see a way out but in the spirit I submit to you that you have to see it before you see it I said you have to see it before you see it in the spirit you have to believe it before you can receive it in the spirit you have to have faith not fear So the Lord said to Moses in verse 15, he said, why do you cry to me? He said, tell the people of Israel to go forward. Tell them just go forward. God didn't stand and have a conversation with him. He didn't didn't therapize Moses. He didn't say, well, tell me what the situation is like. How does it make you feel? God didn't say that. He said, go forward. Because he knew the victory was at hand. See, God doesn't have to stop and talk about the semantics of everything when he knows that there's victory on the other side of it. Jesus even said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, well, why are you here? Do you want to be healed? He said, well, you know, every time I try to come, you know, I try to get in the pool, you know, something just keeps happening. I can't get in every year someone gets. Jesus said, but do you want to be healed? He doesn't want excuses today. Do you want deliverance? I dare say that most people know what the word forward means. We all know what the word forward means, right? In its singular form. But many people don't know how to move forward. They, they know they want to move forward, but, but they don't know how to move forward. They don't know how to encapsulate the concept of the word moving forward and simply apply that concept to their lives. Some of us, we may walk out of here today, heaven forbid, but we may walk out of here today saying, I heard the sermon, I heard the message, I was blessed, but I still don't know how to move forward. They can't seem to find the strength nor the courage to move forward in the direction that the Lord is leading them. Just like God's people, stuck. Someone say stuck. Stuck in fear. Stuck in tradition. Stuck in the way granny always told me to do it. Help us today, Lord. Stuck in the mindset of being comfortable. Stuck in anger. Stuck in depression. Stuck, uh uh-oh, in disobedience. I had to pause right there for that one. Stuck in stubbornness. But God says move forward. Some people are habitually discouraged. 
some people seem to be terminally downtrodden. But today, the word of God, I have to say it again until we get it. You know, the average person has to hear something or be exposed to a certain information at least seven times before it actually sinks into their mind. So I have to keep saying it. God is saying today, it's time to move forward. He's saying today, it's time to move forward. Some people, as I said, they are just habitually always down. Debbie Downer, they always see the dark side to everything. They never see the glass as half full. They always see it as half empty. They never see, they never see themselves above, always ab b below. They never see themselves as the head. But the word of God says that he will make you the head and not the tail. And you're only going to do that by having a mindset of going forward. God sent his word to remind us that from where you are, it's time to move. There are some things, however, that you will have to take along the way because they are tools that you will need to get where you are going. But, 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 there are also some things that you will have to leave behind because they will weigh you down. I heard an artist say, she said, one day all those bags are going to get in your way. They're going to weigh you down. You won't be able to get to where you need to go because you're weighed down with the things that you no longer need. I dare submit to you that there are some people who have walked with you for a period of time and they served a purpose in your life. But now today, from this day forward, God is saying even those people no longer serve your purpose. And you've got to say goodbye to that stuff. You've got to say goodbye to those people because God is saying it's time to move forward. It's going to hurt to say goodbye to some people. Some people you're going to have to cut off completely. It's not personal, but it is what God is calling me to do. Some people you're going to have to reduce your relationship with them. And what I mean by that is you can no longer, there, there are certain categories of relationships that you should have with people. The intimate, the personal, the social. There are some of us who are allowing social people to have access to our intimate thoughts. And we keep wondering why we are destroyed continually. So you're going to have to recategorize some relationships and some connections from this day forward and say, okay, you are no longer intimate because you messed me up the last time I shared something with you. You really didn't pray. You're going to have to recategorize some people. <laughs> because it's time to do what? Come on, say it loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't take everybody with you where God is taking you. You can't go there and it's not personal. You may just have to be cordial with some people. We have recently made a decision, a new connection that we've made. We recently made a decision real, real fast because it only takes him about five minutes. I have a level of discernment. I can pick you out real quick and I'll know. Real quick, it only takes me about five minutes. That's a gift God gave me. A little bit of discernment here and there and there and here. And we determined real fast, okay. You, you, won't be, you won't have access to who we really, really are. We'll greet you in the name of the Lord. We can laugh about what's going on in the world. We can talk about the goodness of the Lord. But as it relates to my vulnerabilities and my personal thoughts, you will not have access because you cannot take them where God is taking me. You cannot go with me there. Amen? All right, all right. Some people don't know how to move forward. But pastor, how do you move forward? I'm glad you asked. In the natural and in the spiritual. There are four things for my note takers. If you take notes, this is the time to take out your pen. For my note takers, the first thing you must do is assess your journey. Someone say assess your journey. Yes. Assess your journey. I don't care if you're 13, 17. I don't care if you're 75. We all have a journey. From the day we hit the earth, we have a journey. It is time to assess your journey. Look at how far we have come as a people. Can we thank the Lord for how far we have come as a people? As a people. I told you, in the natural and in the spiritual. Look at how far God has brought us. We have never let a little bit of trouble stop us from moving forward as a people, right? We are a people of resilience, right? We are a people of strength, right? We are a people of grace, right? We have used our strength time and time again to rise to the top. With all of the markers of suppression and depression and oppression, we continually rise to the top. The brilliance that is in us cannot be compared or it is unmatched. Look how far we've come as a people. Assess our journey. In the spiritual, 
however, look at how far God has brought us. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, for in him, we what? We live, we move, we have our being. And then it goes on to say in that verse, for we also are his offspring. So here's the thing, and hear me young people, you should reflect either your parents, your grandparents, those who are your influencers, you should look like them, you should sound like them, you should act like them because you are their offspring. Much like we are the offspring of God. Therefore, you should not be saying things that God would not say. You should not be doing things that God would not do because we are his offspring. And the worst thing you can do for someone who has influenced you is to misrepresent them. Assess your journey. In him I live, I move, I have my being. I am his offspring. So that means the church is yet alive. The church of God is yet alive. We are often persecuted, but we are yet alive. There are those who are rising up against the church and Christianity and who we are as believers, but the church is yet alive. Uh Uh-huh. Do I have a witness today? I said the church is yet alive. The church building can be closed all day, but the church of God is still alive. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to assess our journey. You have to understand, as I said before, the next victory is just beyond the break. The next victory is just beyond the next turn of the corner. And I declare in this house that, there, that you're just upon, upon the next turn of glory. I prophesy to this house, to Shiloh, that there is going to be another turn of glory. Yes, you've got everything looking nicely aesthetically, but there is yet another turn of glory that God is going to bring to this house the latter glory of this house come on my believer where's Shiloh at today do you believe it today the latter glory of this house shall be greater than that of the former but there's going to be another turn of glory there's going to be another rush of people coming in there's going to be another need that you will satisfy in the community there's going to be another level of prosperity another level of healing in this house in Jesus name In our assessment, we have to pause for a moment, however, because we can look at who we are, we can celebrate all of that, but we have to pause and ask ourselves, because assessment speaks to the good, the not so good, what we need to change, what we need to do. We have to ask ourselves, where have we erred even in our ways? How have we hurt God? Have we misrepresented God? Have we loved God? I heard you earlier, elder, elder favorite, have we loved God? Have we represented him in the dark places or have we just conformed in the workplace? Did we engage in the conversation at the water cooler? Did we participate in that stream of nice, nasty emails that went out? Have we taken pictures and taken videos of things that we know we shouldn't have and spread them? Have we engaged in folly? Who have we been as a people? We have to assess our journey and find out that the choice and realize that the choices that we make need to be altered. Yes, there's strength, there's resilience. God is with us, but you still have freedom to make your own decisions. And you have to now make the better decisions. God is calling for us to go to 2.0, 3.0 in him. He's saying, go forward and go. I have called you to a higher place. So we have to look at ourselves. And we also have to remain grateful every step of the way. Remain grateful for for what the Lord has done. That's how to move forward. Secondly, for my note takers, I like to say that, for my note takers, you have to identify your help. Someone say identify your help. You have to ask yourself, who has been there all the time? Even when I didn't recognize them. Who has been there all the time with me? Even when I didn't want them around. Who has been there? Who has been my constant? Who has been there for me? Even in my dark time. Who forgave me even when I kirked off and said some things to them? Who has stayed by my side? Identify your help. Who has helped me to make a way when I didn't feel like there was a way? 
who has helped me along the way naturally and spiritually. In the natural, God will put people in your life to give you a push, to give you a nudge. Even when you are broken, even when you are disconnected, God will put people in your life to just push you along the way and say, I know you feel bad today. I know you even feel like swearing at me, but I'm going to allow you that because you're in a broken place, but I'm going to carry you because I know where you're going. I know that God is going to take you somewhere great. Who has helped you along the way? Perhaps you need to send out some thank you cards this week and say, thank you for helping me along the way. That's it. I don't need to get into the details, but just thank you for helping me along the way. Thank you for being a friend. You know it. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. I'll stop right there. I'll stop right there. You know the rest. You know the rest. God will send people to help you along your journey. But we have to realize that they are just a resource because God is the source. Can I qualify it? Psalm 46. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, I said there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Someone say all of my help. All of my help. Just, just point up. Just say all my help. All my help. How did you do that? All my help. How did you accomplish that? All my help. How did you survive those examinations? All my help. How when you lost your loved one did you get through that period of grief? All my help. How when your relationship became disconnected did you get through that? I wonder. All of my help. Ah, oh, glory be to God. Thank God for all my help. Come on, come on. Let's just bless the Lord. I felt that in my spirit. All my help. Who has rescued you from others? The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, all of my help. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 54 and 4, it says, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. So if you want to know how to move, you have to identify your help. Thirdly, you have to sharpen your tools. Someone say, sharpen your tools. So in the natural... And again, I've already, I've already recognized that Shiloh, you all are doing a great work in the community, but you have to sharpen your tools. You have to look at what the Lord has given you to do what he's called you to do. Everyone has a gift, a calling, and a talent, and the Lord has called us to do those things, and he's also put gifts and talents inside of us to do what he's called us to do. So if you ever want to reach your destiny, what you have to do is you have to tap and look into what your desires, your passions are, find, identify what your talent, skills, and gifts are, because they should all go along the same. In other words, what you like to do, you already have the gift that's in you to do. So in other words, if you don't like to cook, if you, can't, if you cannot cook, don't sign up for the kitchen committee because we like, our, we like our fish fried hard and we like our chicken fried done, okay? We even like our vegetables cut up a certain way. Julian, please, Julian vegetables. Thank you. You have to sharpen your tools. So Shiloh, that means you have to look at how you have been providing support. You have to have those board meetings, those special call meetings when you sit and you look and you say, how can we do this better? It has been working out for a while now, but we need to take this to the next level. You have to sharpen the tools, the resources, the things that the Lord has given you, programs, sacrifices, all kinds of things that you do in the community that you do to help people, not just to bring them in. Pastor Aisha said, if all we do is come to church and just dance and shout and praise and sing God, we're just a country club. That's all we are. But God has called us. He said, go into the highways, compel them to come. And even if they never come in here, when he says compel them to come, he doesn't mean compel them to come into Shiloh. Compel them to come unto me. Oh, glory be to God. That's our assignment. So we must sharpen our tools if we want to move forward. 
supporting businesses of color as much as possible. Amen. You now have pop-up shops in malls in certain locations where the entire inventory is, is, is people of color. It's, it's provided by people of color. But now let me say this to my entrepreneur and my business person. Let me say this, and I'm going to go back to the message. When you provide a service, please set it up right. Make sure it's quality. Please, even if it costs you a little more, you have a brand that you represent. Can I, is, is that all right if I just, he sees he gave me the okay. Please set it up right. Don't give us that Henny Penny stuff. Can I tell you what Henny Penny is? My wife just put her head down. Henny Penny is like that low cost stuff. Sometimes when we travel, yeah, I'm going to say it. Sometimes when we travel, I like to keep all my stuff in suitcases. My backpack, my arm, my suitcase. Every now and then when we travel, it's time to go. I'm loading the truck and I'll look down and I'll see like three pair of shoes in a Walmart bag. <laughs> Baby, we are getting ready to travel to New York City. Can we at least look like we have some class today <laughs> when we travel? What? It's a bag. So then when you get to the hotel, you've got all these bags. The plastic bags are bursting and falling apart. Shoes are rolling all over the street. The child almost died trying to run into the street. To it's Henny Penny. I don't like it. I like nice things. I like nice things. It's Henny Penny. So I tell them, baby, just put that in the suit. If you have to get another bag, get, they don't even all have to match. I'll compromise. It doesn't even have to match. But put it all in the right place. Don't come out with all these, because I'm going to call you a bag lady. That's what I'm going to do. Let me stop there. Let me move on. Let me move on. But please, business owners, don't give us the Henny Penny stuff. I'm sorry. Don't go on some of those websites where you know you can get 17 dresses for 37 cents each. We wash it one time and it comes out looking like a Barbie doll dress. <laughs> Take some time. I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, this is live, so I can't call some, some, some provider names. You know, I can call a few, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. Some of us, we've even ordered, I've ordered from them and been disappointed. Come on, come on. I don't want to get stuck here. I got, just say, move on, honey. Just say, move on, move on. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> move forward, move forward. There you go. <laughs> but listen, business owners, please do us the service. Get something that is quality. Invest in quality printing. Re oh, no, this is the respond to business inquiries. Respond to emails. Respond to phone calls. And don't, come, don't think that people owe you something because they're not satisfied with your product. Give them the refund because a good name is desired. You think you're making money on one hand, but a person who is dissatisfied will go tell 10 other people, I'm never going to shop with them again. Google reviews, Yelp reviews, reviews. I'm helping somebody today. Let me move on. What spiritual tools do you have in your arsenal that will help you to move forward? The Bible says in Exodus 4, 1 and 2, And Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me. This is at the time when God is telling him to go. This is when he's out in the wilderness now, when God is telling him to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, Pharaoh to let my people go. He says, Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. unto thee. The Lord said unto him, What is in thine hand? We all have something in our hand. We all have a gift. I have a gift. You have a gift. Some people have several gifts. But everybody has at least one gift. Some of us operate in the ministry of helps. Some of us operate as greeters at the door because we have a nice smile. And we can put on that smile and people will come in sometimes grumpy. But we say, welcome to Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're glad that you are here. Come right on in. Let us find you a seat for you. Would you like to sit here or here? The praise team is getting ready to begin in just a moment. Would you like to use our facilities before? They some people, some of us have that gift. And that is a gift. And it will transform the hearts of people who would be otherwise. We all have something in our hand. You shouldn't be ushering if your feet hurt. Because when your feet hurt, everything hurts. You're standing at the door just complaining and rocking. Someone comes through the door, come on in here, just have a seat. It's because your feet hurt. You should not be ushering. Don't be a greeter. 
don't go fry chicken so then you can bounce around while you fry the chicken if your feet hurt. Move on, Pastor B. Some of us are stuck because we feel we don't have the tools that it takes to do what we know God has called us to do. But today, God is also asking us what is in your hand. In order for us to move forward, you've got to understand what is in your hand. What tools do you have? When you get home this evening, I challenge you, after the celebration tonight, in your quiet time, start making a list and make an assessment of the things that you know God has gifted you and the things he's called you to do. And start looking at your gifts and make a recommitment to God that I'm going to now, God, start using every everything I have to give these gifts back to you so that the kingdom of God can be manifested here on earth. I challenge you. If you do that, it will improve your 2023 like never before. Everyone has value. Everyone has, everyone matters. And God is saying, I've called you to move forward. He's saying, I've already equipped you. I've already equipped you with the task, with the things that you need to satisfy your task. Just move forward. In the spiritual, we have tools, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, the fruit of the Spirit. Those are the tools that God has called us to operate with and how we handle people, not just at the door, but even in our text messages. Tools. Prayer, praise, praise is my weapon, it's often said. Prayer, praise, worship, study, consecration, those are all the tools. And it's time for us to sharpen our tools. So again, I challenge you to recommit yourself today. When you leave this place, say, I'm, you know, I'm going to pray a little more. I'm going to study a little more. Invest in a study Bible and learn how to cross-reference and look at different translations and understand this, the, the, the scripture in context. Don't just wait for Pastor Anderson or anyone else who may speak to tell you what God is saying. We have access to God, direct access to God. So you can get to God and find out for your yourself I've seen churches where everyone believes what the pastor says that's what pastor said and when the pastor expires retires or moves on no one can survive because all they did is listen to what pastor said no one ever learned how to seek God for themselves no one ever learned how to pray to God for themselves we as leaders would be a disservice to our, to our members if we just allow them to just listen to what I say, do what I do. No, 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 no. Find God for yourself and then call me if you can't reach God. But you can always reach God, so you really don't have to call me. I'm just here as an added support to lift up your arms. Okay. The Bible says in James 1.17, every good gift and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. If you know you have gifts, it is time now to sharpen them. It is time now to sharpen them. If there's something that you know that you can do, but you want, you want to do it better, then just tap into YouTube, tap into Google, go back to school, take some, take some courses at a college or at a university, take some online courses, shadow with someone. If you want to work on the audiovisual team, go sit back with the audiovisual team and find out and learn what they're doing and ask questions. But use your gifts to the glory of God. Someone say, to the glory of God. 1 Peter 4.10 says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. That's how to move forward. And finally, my fourth point, and I'm out of here. Set new goals. Set new goals. Ask yourself, where do we want to go? Ask yourself, what is the hope of our offspring? Ask yourself, what is the trajectory of our community? Ask yourself, what is the trajectory of our community? What about the children? Come on, somebody. What about the children? Are we so consumed with just coming to the house of God? Just, ooh, glory be to God, glory be to God, while we allow our children to do just anything? As you can see from the results of what the, the fruit that the, the academy produces, that is not true in this case. But we can always tighten up and do a little better. I know we can. I'm, I'm looking at my wife now. I know we can. We can do better. We can do better. Amen? 
Set some new goals. Understand again that God trusts you as you pursue this next level of victory. He is confident in you. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work, someone say a good work, in you. Put your hand and say, In me. He's able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That is how you move forward. It's time for us to move forward past offenses. Move forward past defenses. It's time for us to move forward past putting up fences. It is time for us to move forward past tradition, but move toward revelation. It is time for us to move forward past social societal norms, but move toward kingdom principles. Come on today. Talk to me, somebody. It is time for us to move past activities that are steeped in darkness, and it's time for us to now walk into the light. You have to assess your journey. Recognize your help. Sharpen your tools and set new goals. What you have to understand is the Israelites were always mobile. They were always mobile. They were always moving from here to here to here. Not only in proximity, but also in relationship with God. They were always mobile. They were never stagnant. If they took one step back, God would send his word to allow them to take three steps forward. But they were always mobile. They were never stagnant in him. That's how they grew as a people. That's how they grew in believing God. Because they were always mobile. And God is saying now that it is time to move forward. God is saying today, as I close, I've got you. God is saying, I've got you. Whatever it is, God is saying, I've got you. I've got you. Move, 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 move forward now. You don't have to understand where you're going, but you just have to move now. He said, I've commanded you to move. Hallelujah. Not going back, moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. Thank you. My past is over in you. Things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, I'm not going back, not going back. I'm moving ahead, oh, oh, oh. I'm here to declare to you, my past, my past is, is over in you, all things are made new, surrender my life to Christ, I'm moving, I'm not going back, I'm, not going back. I'm moving ahead, I'm here to declare to you, know the Lord as your personal Savior you've heard the word and you realize I can't move forward 
because he's the one that is carrying me. I have to know him for him to carry me and move me forward. The Bible says in Revelation, Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He stands at the door and knocks. Jesus is not going to come into your heart. He's not going to take over your will, knock the door down and come into your heart. You have to invite him. You have to ask him to come in because Jesus loves you that much. Amen. He loves you. He says, if you would just open the door to your heart, don't think about what tomorrow is going to look like. He says, if you will just open your heart and allow me to come in, I will sit with you and I will sup with you, which means he will commune with you and you will learn of his ways and he will make you anew and he will make you feel better. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. If you would like to know the Lord today as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask you, if you will, raise your hand in his presence. If you're unsaved and you want to know the Lord today, just raise your hand in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see some hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, by faith, will you take a step and come to the front? I believe they have a ministry team that will pray with you. In the name of Jesus, will you step out from where you are and come today? Jesus sees your hands and heaven is rejoicing. The fact that you have recognized that you would like to know the Lord. Can we thank the Lord for those who have raised their hands? Now that you've raised your hands, I'm going to ask you to come today. If you will, just step out. Just step out by faith. Just step out. Just make that step today. If you make one step, God will make two. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to con you into coming to Christ. I just simply offer Christ yeah, to you today. If you will trust him, he will make your life anew. Was that a hand of salvation earlier? It was. Would you like to know the Lord as your personal Savior? Oh, you know the Lord. Amen. Was that a hand of salvation? You wanted to be saved? I saw some hands go up here. I believe we have time for this. Amen. We have time for salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we thank the Lord as they come? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Giving your life to Christ is the best decision that you can make in your life ever. Come on up. Come on up. Giving your life to Christ is the best decision that you can make ever. Come on. Can we thank the Lord for those who have come today? Heaven is rejoicing. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor, I don't know how it is done. Should I lead them in prayer? Do you have a team that works with them? Okay, thank you very much. The Bible says, the day that you hear my voice, if you will, just, if you will, I just, I want them to hear clearly. I don't want them to get caught up in the song. They need to know that they're making a clear decision. God said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That means don't turn away from me. Because someone is not a believer today and they've heard the word and they decided not to come. But he says the day you hear my voice, the day that you feel or you hear me calling when the word has become real to you, don't harden your heart, but come today. So we thank the Lord for you. Again, choosing Christ is the best decision that you could make. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, come on, repeat after me if you will. Dear Lord, I've come to you today. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I have done you wrong. I have erred in your ways. I ask that you would have grace on me, that you would have mercy on me now. I've come today because I want to be right with you. I want you to come into my heart I believe that Jesus Christ came, that he died for my sins. I believe, God, that you have raised Jesus from the dead. So forgive me for all that I've done wrong and come into my heart, Jesus. Come alive in me, Jesus. I proclaim that you are now my Lord. I proclaim that you are my Savior and I will live for you. I denounce the works of the enemy and I pronounce the works of God. 
In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that you are saved in Jesus' name. Can we thank the Lord today? They've got some information. So now what you have to do, I see you're members of the academy. I don't know where you're a member at, but now what you have to do is you have to find a church home and you have to stay in the home. And, the, and you have to stay, find a church home and stay in the church. That's increased Bible study, show up for chapel, all those kinds of things. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect from this day forward. But what it means is you are now a sinner who got up and you're covered by the banner of grace. So as soon as you realize you've done something wrong, be quick to repent. Say, Lord, please forgive me. And if you've erred with someone, get to them and make it right. Amen. God is counting on you and he trusts you and God loves you. Amen. High five. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You may return to your seats. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Shiloh. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. After service is finished, I'm going to see if they need an associate pastor at their church. Let the church say amen. <laughs> That's me. I'm, I just applied for the job. Um, oh, no amen for that one. You're at Crawford. 